A more simplified question, but my, uh, I don't know if the answer would be complicated. But um, I get frequently asked, what is, a, what is really major differences between, like let's say, Eurorack modular versus uh, a Google system, like a 200 unit? Um, well, you know, this is sort of a, a pretty unique thing in a lot of ways. Um, I mean, I, I'm going to kind of, probably in the course of this thing, I'm going to end up saying a lot of, uh, that it's sort of Don's ideas that are at work, and um, they're really particular. Um, one, one idea is that he really wanted to build something that, that had the same sort of form factor and view of like workflow of a 200 system, but inside was sort of deeply hybridized in its design as far as um, analog and digital. It's, it's really a big network of microcontrollers with little bits of analog stuff dangling off of them. And those are the sort of special bits like these wave shapers and these filters. Um, that give it certain sound qualities. And then you get the ability to, you know, like I've been probably seeing me, see me doing this, of like uh, flipping all the, uh, all the parameter values around um, on all the modules by recalling their sets. And stuff like, like the, route, the patch routing in this, in this matrix. module communication, which is how I'm making notes with the MIDI interface without patching it. Um, and then, and just sort of the flexibility of, uh, of having both of those, both sets of things. Um, a sort of obvious difference between like most, uh, there's the most modular systems and, and this one is the two kinds of cables that you see pretty quickly. And I think that's got um, a lot of justification in terms of the, the design principles because CV, um, like musical parameter values tend to behave differently from audio as far as the ranges that are useful and how they should behave when they're, when they're summed together. Um, generally, in, with, a, with the parameter, it's sort of everything's kind of um, set up so that so that you can think of each parameter as a linear range, and um, um, in audio, you of course have an exponential range where you want to be able to hear really 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 small signals and pretty loud signals, and you don't really want them to get lost or get saturated. So there's two. Uh, really different attitudes towards designing the signal path. Um, that's a big difference. That's uh, sort of histor uh, historical difference between Christoph. Can you go a bit more in depth about um, the whole concept of the the hybrid um, idea of the whole the whole system? Because that's kind of radical in the terms of module, but it's really worked out very well for you guys. Well, I don't know. Um, it's just sort of, um, I think it's just a question of taking advantage of the technology that's, that's available right now, which is, um, and actually, the design of this system is, is almost 10 years old. Um, so probably if we were do, to do it again now, it would have a lot more processing power. You only get more into like because some of the some of the stuff like the FM has to be mediated by a microcontroller, and that that gets tricky with uh, with the um, with the uh, resource with the processing resources that are available. Particular guys, but um, yeah, I don't know. It just seems sort of sort of if what you want is to work with this this electrical world out here with the cables and interface with, with arbitrary stuff from elsewhere. Um, you need, you need, um, you need this, 
the, the voltages themselves to be available. And um, at the same time, if you, if you want sort of arbitrary recall of parameters, you have to have a computer. Um, so it's just sort of slamming together those things. And I think that this is really, it's really a, that concept is going, seems to me like a, like a valuable one for the future. I mean, I mean, we're seeing it on a bigger scale now with like stuff like the Volta systems and um, people really thinking in terms of, of, of having, a, having their, their sound sources, which are these like organic components and their control sources being different things that can, that can work together seamlessly in, in the studio. And this is the same idea, but on a sort of smaller level. And I think that, um, yeah, hopefully we can see more, see that taken a little further and, and you know, other, other people's ideas in that field. I think um, one thing that's going to happen is we, we would like to um, eventually open up the the firmware to this stuff to, to third party developers so people can cut really customize the behavior of, of the modules if they have if they have programming skills, which a lot of people do. Oh, I just wanted to ask um, does the patch memory actually recall the position of your patch cables? No. Okay. So uh, still have to I mean it. that's one reason why there's this C V matrix I see. Uh, it, so, some people do kind of really try to use it in this way where they set up a, a kind of universal patch and then use the matrix to create different routings and different behaviors. I see. So you can, it's like two, two roads to the same end. Yeah, I mean there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of other uses for, for, a, for a matrix mixer also. And uh, there's a lot of uses for patch memory. It also doesn't have to be um, monolithic, like I, we can enable only one or two modules to, to be addressed by the preset manager. So, for example, you could only flip around the, the patch route and then, like, you know, you um, manually manipulate the parameters or, or whatever. Um, I mean, I've, I've seen just these two modules, the preset manager and the patch manager, are really being used as sort of the brain for like a big like, rack of pedals and sense and crap. I mean, it doesn't even have to be inside of this context of the password system. Um, I've seen some people get really into like seeing what happens when, you know, you can um, recall different presets with the wrong patching. And, and <laughs> I know uh, Alessandro really likes that feature. <laughs> <laughs>